need food reserves well come on over to eFoods Global at booksmart.myefoods.com again that's booksmart.myefoods.com eFoods Global is the gold standard of food reserves tell them Wise Wolf sent you welcome to the Wise Wolf Project I'm your host Wise Wolf it's April 28, 2011 Roughly high noon. Over the past few weeks and months, I've heard a growing crescendo of people claiming, or with the belief that gold and silver are in a bubble, having a, a very cautious and sometimes even a negative outlook on gold and silver. And some of these people are people I, I actually respect. I believe that their channel does have great quality for those who watch their channel. And although I disagree with their premise, if you go back and look at my video uh, Gold Bubble Hypothesis, I keep them, uh, I always listen to them because I don't want to get caught up in the hype. You don't want to get caught up in yourself thinking this, that, and other. You always want a check and balance for your thoughts. Because sometimes you may not be thinking rationally. And you need these people to usher in an idea that maybe you haven't thought of. And they could be right, they could be wrong. But you should never only be on one side or thinking on one side of a trade. Now, having said that, they got me to thinking that, and I've known this for a while, but maybe many of you don't. You should always have an end game. The smart investor has an end game. What do you mean? I mean, you should have a point in which you get out of a trade or an investment. There's a point where you actually hit the sell button metaphorically so if you're talking silver let's say you there, uh, there are many ways to put your end game your your I'm out scenario you can do it based on price so let's say you bought silver at 30 and you say when it reaches 60 I'm out and when it gets to, when and if it gets to 60 have the guts to to sell don't stay in I mean, you made the rule for, for a purpose. Many investors uh, have gotten greedy and have lost their shirts by not following their own rules. So you could do it by price. You can do it by time. I'm going to stay in this trade for a few months. I'm going to stay in this trade for a few years, blah, blah, so on and so forth. And when that time frame comes, no matter what's going on, I'm going to get out. You can do it based on some technical analysis so or fundamental analysis so if you're talking stocks a uh, PE ratio uh, generally talks about how cheap or how expensive a stock is uh, so maybe you bought at the PE ratio of 5 and you say well when it gets to 18 or 20 I'm going to sell the stock but whatever it is have an end game because all this is is a means to an end you're not buying these investments just to be buying them you're buying them to do something else with right you don't save money just for the for, for the sake of saving money you, you you intend on doing something with it so the smart investor has an end game but you should r always be two steps ahead once you've gotten out of that investment, what are you then going to put it into? Because if you have to convert it to cash, what are you going to do with the cash? If your point was just to blow the money, you could have done that uh, without investing. So wealth is, is, is a, a time factor. It's money with respect to time. And so once you've gathered this money, you need to put it into some other vehicle that's going to increase it because staying in dollar form or fiat form uh, will decrease your wealth. You, you will see, as you're seeing now, 
that your purchasing power is being greatly diminished. So the smart investor has an end game. The smarter investor is two steps ahead. That's my time. Remember, the invisible is more powerful than the visible. Think about it.